Page two, Frankie. Yeah, yeah. I got my dick out. <laughs> like yeah. Right? About you. We figured after all the heat with all, all the studio lights, it'll be great. But <laughs> that's the trick of the uh, rock and comedy show, Water. So thank you for having me here, man. Thank you for uh, uh, accepting the invite. The last time, after my show at Brad Garrett's uh, show at MGM Grand, his comedy club, I had a great show, and then sat down with this gorgeous, uh, just a very Pixie is sweet. I think she was blonde. Really nice girl. And she proceeded to interview me. And then after she repeated the same question about four times, I said, you know, maybe she's a little uh, challenged by whatever <laughs> she had ingested. And, 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 and here it is with, uh, with Rebecca. It's the first time I've ever given one of my co-hosts a headliner or, or a big interview to do. And she's such a Howard Stern fan that I was like, you know, she's been in radio. She's worked for Capitol Records. I'm like, she's going to be good to go. She couldn't have been sweeter. She couldn't have been sweeter. I think she just was overserved by herself or whoever. Uh, not only was she overserved, but she had had, uh, apparently she had had foot surgery or something and was on lower tabs while she was drinking that wonderful PBR. <laughs> and uh, it just kicked in. There's a lot of people getting foot operations so they can get pain pills. Like right, that. yeah. <laughs> I told her she just have the stick removed from her ass, but she uh, she didn't think that was very funny. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so... Uh, so well, where is she, Jay? I, I have no idea, actually. You uh, trade in the cute blonde and I get Bobby. Well, yeah, Lin- I know. Lindy, Jeez. Lindy, I was going to bleach my hair. She's Carl Olio, Olio Records. He's responsible <laughs> for dragging me over here. Uh, Linda's going to be here to do the news today, so you'll, you'll, uh, you'll have some... Very fine looking ladies here. Today. Well, I tell you, the highlight of my day was to pull up with Carl uh, just before we stormed up the 44 floors, and we were greeted by Willie Nelson. Oh. That was really nice. <laughs> and then he introduced himself as uh, Gary the Hippie, and he couldn't have been nicer. I'm, all I could think of is if, if only the whole world was as nice as the guy who just stepped out of 1967, which I also did. So, God bless you. 1967, it was $15 fine. In Ann Arbor at the University of Michigan if you got caught with pot. And then 40, 50 years later, it's still against the law in so many places. So, you know, I got drunk for 40 years and I woke up one day and it's still against the law. I'm like, what are you guys doing? You know. <laughs> but it's nice to meet you, Gary. But thank God for Las Vegas, Jake. Thank God for Las Vegas. That's right. So, and you would think here it would, it would be it would already be, we would have beat Colorado, you would have thought. It's like coffee, yeah. tea, uh, milk, beer, and pot, you know. <laughs> you go. Walk around. It's the four food groups, right? <laughs> yeah. 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 And then you realize that's not a good interview. I don't know. So I went back in my brain and I realized that when I was in third grade, this is true, I was in third grade sitting on the floor of my buddy's house with a bunch of guys. In the, in the 50s, you didn't have dryers. You know, if you went snowball fighting and got soaking wet and freezing, you came in and damn well sat there till you dried off a little bit and warmed up and went back out. You know, nowadays kids come in and they throw the clothes in the dryer, they're good to go. It's like the Rolling Stones changing their blood, you know. <laughs> but we're all sitting there, and my older cousin, who's like five years older, which when you're in third grade, he's in eighth grade, he walked in, took out a piece of paper, and read a dirty joke. He read a parody of The Night Before Christmas, and this, I know this sounds so melodramatic when I tell people, but I, I'm still in, I look around, I looked around that room and saw everybody was spellbound. They were smiling and laughing and they forgot they were cold, you know, because it was, it was so cool. It went on and on. And something in my stupid little third grade brain must have said, wow, that's cool. Or whatever, whatever is cool in yeah. third grade in 1954, you know, it, it, that's neat or whatever. And since then, I swear I've remembered every joke I've heard read what it just has stuck in my brain forever and I knew every joke in the world before I started doing comedy you know I played in a band in the 70s and we told jokes in between our original songs and people come up at the bar and say hey I got a joke and I'd say alright I'm going to count down from 10 and if I get to 0 and I don't know the joke I'll buy you a drink and never bought a drink that's 1975 <laughs> then I got thrown out of my last band <laughs> did, did I tell you all this stuff already I was in a three piece band and one night <laughs> The other two guys were in the back room and they said, we're leaving the band and starting our own band. 
I said, wait a minute. If there's three guys in the band and two of them leave, the- that's kicking me out of the band. So then I just started to tell my jokes on stage. And that was 1970. I, I count that as my official start, 1979, January 79. I think I actually got $20 at the Rainy Night House in Queens. And, uh, and that was the... You know, and then I never look back. Each month, they, every couple months, I look back, and I wasn't making any money, but I was making more money than I had. You know, so it was a slow, slow, like a frog on a frying pan with the heat slowly increasing. You know, I didn't even feel it. And then one day I got sober for two seconds. I said, where did I get all this money? You know, I got rich on the Stern Show. <laughs> don't worry, it's gone, Bobby. Don't don't light up like I'm buying I'm food. Like, oh. He's thinking, wow, he's good for a couple burgers. <laughs> God. So that how was that for a fast answer? No, it was pretty good actually. <laughs> that was that was actually the short version. <laughs> what's uh what's one of your favorite jokes to still tell that still makes you laugh? Guy, you you know they there's so many people can't believe you know they still make me laugh. I was working like the other night at a tiny you know like. I can't believe the places I work, but I just love doing it. And I told them, you know, I could do this act in an elevator. I'm still, I'm still enchanted with with doing the stupid thing. And you know, what usually is my favorite joke or favorite jokes are the one I've recently, you know, there's jokes, there's great jokes that I learned that over the sixty six years I just have never, you know, they slip through the cracks. I think my favorite, you know, when I get to a, this place, you should get to in your act where. You just love telling a joke. And one of the ones I really love is uh, a guy goes for a job interview. And the interviewer says, what do you think is your biggest fault? And the guy says, I think my biggest fault is my honesty. And the interviewer says, I don't think honesty is a fault. And the guy says, I don't give a fuck what you think. <laughs> Which is just, just deeply funny, you know. But I love them all. You know, I just love, you know. and I And I love the ones that, don't always get a laugh because, you know, sometimes, you know, some, it's not the crowds are hip or unhip or smart. You know, just sometimes a, a joke hits them and sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes a great joke just falls flat. Maybe they missed a word or whatever. But, you know, you know and it happens to everybody. I can still hear Jackie Mason saying, uh, that was the end. <laughs> There's no more. That's the end of the joke. <laughs> Maybe you'd like more on that joke. That's all I got. Wow. Now, uh, I mean, there's so there's so many jokes. The one that stands out the most for me is my mom could never remember it. And she always mess it up. And it's the one about the duck walking into the store and he wanted to buy some grapes. You know what? That's so funny <laughs> because I'm going through my I got I'm a, I'm middling. You know, Bobby Slayton is headlining, so I only have to you know do like twenty or twenty twenty five minutes. I don't know how many minutes. So my hour act, I only can do you know less than half of it, and. uh and I, so I got to chop out a lot of stuff and jump over because I want to get to the filth at the end. And that's one of the ones that I'm like, I really got to take that out. But I love that joke. It's just so, <laughs> now we got to tell it because yeah. the audience says, listen. But that's another one that sometimes the people scream and sometimes they're like, ha, 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 you know. But, you know, attitude jokes are so great. You know, and I do two attitude jokes in a row, which is, you know, it's almost like daring the people to you know, tar and feather me. <laughs> You know, uh, the duck goes into 7-Eleven. I always say, you know, I, my favorite thing is the little stupid lines you're saying between, you know, I go, the duck goes into 7-Eleven, and I look down at some girl and go, this is true, you know, which was just <laughs> just to entertain myself. A duck goes into 7-Eleven, says, you got any grapes? And the guy says, no, we have no grapes. And the duck leaves. And the next day, the duck walks to 7-Eleven, says, you got any grapes? And the guy says, no, we don't have any grapes. And the duck leaves. And the next day, Duck walks to 7-Eleven. She says, you got any grapes? The guy says, look, Daffy, this is the third day in a row. You walked in there asking for grapes. You walk in there and ask for grapes. One more time, I'm going to nail your stupid web feet to the floor. And Duck leaves. <laughs> next day, Duck walks to 7-Eleven. He says, you got any nails? The guy says, no. He says, good. You got any grapes? <laughs> <laughs> now, that is not an easy, really easy joke to tell because you got you to gotta keep it flowing and keep, you know. And it's so stupid. It's so stupid. Yeah. But it's just wonderful, you know. <laughs> we were out uh, uh, with this buddy named Chris Palmer, and we were uh, driving to California once, and we were listening to uh, one of your CDs, and he goes, have you ever heard the, he started telling a bunch of jokes, and he goes, have you ever heard the story of the purple flower? <clears throat> and I don't know if you know the premise of this joke, but it's kind of like, almost like the aristocrats. You know, a shaggy dog story. Like, like, how long can you take this before somebody wants to punch you in the face? 
right? Right, and, which is perfect for a long distance drive. Right, and he was sitting there and he's telling this joke, you know, and it basically started with this. This kid was on the bus and he overheard these two girls talking, and basically all she said was, you know, I hope he doesn't give you a purple flower. And he said, What's well, a purple flower? And he got kicked off the bus, and he goes all through school trying to find out what this purple flower is, and yada yada all this stuff. And uh, the principal's like, "You can't be talking like that." And he gets he gets suspended from school and goes home, and his parents kick him out of the house. And then he he's homeless, he's growing up, and bums are beating him up. He goes to jail. I mean, he's telling me this. It's like ten fifteen minutes into this joke, and I'm like. Where is this going? He goes, it's almost done. And he got, he's going, and he's now he's in. He, he got married. He still doesn't know what a purple flower is. 23 minutes, he tells this joke. And you get to the end of it. And, I, and he goes, so this lady goes, what's your problem? He goes, oh, my whole life I've been trying to do nothing but find out the meaning of this purple flower. And every time I do, it's just been bad luck. I've been to jail. I've been beat up. I've been homeless. She goes, oh, you, you, you want the answer to what the purple flower is? And he goes, yes. And she goes, the end of the street. There's a house. A little picket fence. All I can't around. believe you're putting us through this. Go ahead. And it gets all, it gets <laughs> all the way to the end of this joke. I've waited 25 minutes. And I'm like, all right, here comes the punchline. He goes, the guy walks across the street and gets hit by a bus and dies. He goes, you know what the moral of the story is? I go, what? And he goes, look both ways before you cross the street. I go, you motherfucker. I was so pissed. That's so much so, fun. Yeah. Linda Lou's here, everybody. Hi, Linda Lou. Yeah. And here. Careful of the step. Uh, none for me, but thank you, honey. Bobby, yeah. No, no, I'm good right now. Am I the only lush? Yeah, today. He was looking for one. Jackie was. So drink up. <laughs> you know what? I'll, let me hit you an equally bad one. So Goldstein comes to Las Vegas, and he goes to a great whorehouse. Everybody says, go to this great whorehouse. And they say, you're going to really love the, the Golden Flower horse, Whorehouse. But whatever you do, don't get the wax job. You do not want the wax job. And Goldstein says, all right, I won't get the wax job. So he goes to the whorehouse, and he goes for everything on the menu, everything. And he's, you know, he's taking some Viagra, and he's just doing everything, everything, and he can't stand it. He finally says, what the hell, you know? He says, give me the wax job. So the girl strips him naked and puts him in front of a table and puts astroglide on his balls and his dick and rubs him and massages him. And, and he gets a huge boner and she, his boner is laid out across the table. And all of a sudden she takes a rubber mallet and pow! And the wax comes flying out of his ears. <laughs> now that's the same joke as yours, except exactly. at least it has a tiny bit of a punchline. Right. I would have told it if I wanted to sit here for 30 minutes. And I got my friends back, though, with that joke. We, we were out eating one night, and they're all telling jokes. And I go, here's one. And I knew I had them about five minutes in. I was like, I can keep this going. You know, it's really fun, but I, be I became, so long ago, became a social leper. Because, because I really do know all the jokes. And I really have to stop people because if somebody starts telling a joke and I don't say I know it, they're going to say, oh, I told Jackie Martin a joke and he didn't know it. And, and I do know it, so I don't, you know, the definition of a gentleman is someone who hasn't heard the story. You know, a woman starts to tell you a joke or, any, or even anybody tells you a joke. It's so, yeah, my girlfriend's always like, let him tell a joke, laugh at that joke. And I'm like, I'm in a different situation. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, uh, and it's, it's like being a social leper because somebody opens their mouth. It freaks people out. You know, people come up and say, now I got one you don't know. And they go, huh? And I go, to get to the other side. And they're like, whoa, you know. But that's that's the only thing I know. But it's really interesting, you know, but it's fun. And people love to, you know, I, I've made people crazy. You know, James uh, Toback, he had his Mike Tyson documentary out. It was a big party right after the screening at Sundance. And he came over and said, Jackie, I'm a fan. I got one for you. And he started to tell me a joke. I said, yeah, James, I know that, or I finished it. And here we at the party for his Mike Tyson documentary. And he's walking around, but in the back of his mind, he's circling back and trying to, you know, he's supposed to be celebrating his documentary, but he's he's so damn determined to try and tell me a joke, Evan, because it makes people crazy. Right. And that that's what uh, uh, Stump the Joke Man was always so fun. Well, the thing is, the joke that people, the jokes people remember and want to tell me are, your are, are great jokes. Of course, that's why they know them. And that's why they repeat them. And of course, I want to know the good ones. When I get stumped on stage, it's some lady with a kid's joke from her kindergarten class, you know, which is always fun, you know. <laughs> Who knows? 
Uh, it's a rock and comedy show. We are live, and uh, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we've got more with Jackie the Joker. You Man. have commercials and everything. Oh, of course, that's so cool. What pays the bills? We got strip and dip chicken here today, and ping box donuts. You know, I didn't even ask you if it was all right to be. Are we FCC regulated? <laughs> no. Oh, okay. <laughs> so you have commercials, but you can still curse, right? Okay. Well, I apologize for doing it without asking. That's all right. I was trying to impress Linda Lou. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back, everybody, right after this. Now uh, let's uh, let's talk with Jackie about uh, Bill Cosby and that situation. Do you think uh, do you think all these women are telling the truth? No, no. You know how broads are. <laughs> of course, they're all telling the truth. You know what's the most amazing thing? I think is his wife. You know, I don't know if she just has a blind eye or whether she made a deal with herself a million years ago or something. But I mean. The balls that to think you could, you know, when, when I was on the Stern show and he was so pompous and everything. Um, when I, do you remember it was it was it in the nineties and all of a sudden he got caught with the booty calls? Yeah, it was, yeah, it was right. And right. that was a whole big deal. And uh, but a booty call, you know, if he went running around, running across town to get laid, no harm, no foul. He's cheating on his wife, but that's you know, if he calls the girl and she says come over, you know, that's that's two consent, consenting adults, you know, presumably. But, uh, it, you know, he, he, you got to give it to He's smart. Like, divide and conquer. If you drug somebody and bang him in Oklahoma and drug somebody and bang him in Walla Walla, Michigan, and drug somebody in Banger, Maine, not to make a bad joke, you know, the <laughs> odds of these girls ever meeting together in the Bahamas and comparing stories, you know, who would ever strike out and say, hey, this happened to me because he's going to get squashed. But in the days of Internet and social media, somebody says something, then everybody else can pop up. You know, you know, the worst thing about it is, you know, you know, I don't know. I don't know if he's guilty, but it, it really looks like he's guilty of most of them, you know. But what kills the whole thing is when, when a girl says, yeah, he drugged me and had his way with me in Hawaii. And then he did it again when I flew out to meet him in, in the Bahamas. And then when I went down to the islands, he did it again. Like, lady, yeah. you know, that takes all the wind out of the sails. When, you know, if you're going, you're going back for more. And go, that doesn't make it right, but it takes a little of the oomph out of the accusation. But, you know, it's, am- it's amazing that he hasn't. Address, or at least as far as I know, he hasn't addressed it yet, and he's still doing shows, and it's, you know, it's so weird, you know. And, you know, I don't know about you, but everybody says the same thing. He's Bill Cosby. He's so funny. He's so popular. Why would he have to drug anybody? And, yeah. you know, it's like maybe he just gets sick of going through the even hello, how, you know, the hello, how are you on Bill Cosby? Come to my room. He's just like, you know. Right. He doesn't want to do any of the work, you know. Yeah, but you know who wants to make love to somebody that's you know drugged up? Besides me and Linda Lou. <laughs> can I open you another beer, Linda Lou? <laughs> Would you turn your head so I can put something in your beer, Linda Lou? <laughs> what do you think? What do you think? I, I mean, I I don't want to believe it. I mean, like everybody, you don't want to believe that Bill Cosby did that, but. There's like 30, 40 now. That- yes, when it, around fifteen or sixteen, it starts to turn the tide. You know. Yeah, you can't pay them all off. You know, you remember that everybody had that famous time in their life where they go, wait a minute, maybe O.J. is guilty, you know. <laughs> you, know. Every, you know, I remember as clear as a bell, as a kid, every Saturday night, my parents are across the street getting drunk, and I'm sitting there alone at my TV dinner watching three hours of wrestling from Sunnyside Gardens on Channel 9, and then two hours of wrestling on Channel 5 from New Jersey, and I'm sitting there as a kid just loving it. You know, Killer Kowalski and the Graham Brothers and the Midgets and uh, Sonny Arnold Graham from Albany. You know, I remember this so well. And all of a sudden, one day, as a kid, you're sitting there going, wait a minute. If he leaped off that turnbuckle and came down on that guy's head with his knee, it would have killed him. And you turn it off and never watch it again. All of a sudden, the bulb goes off, just like after the 16th the 17th girl. Wait, it, ding, guilty, you know. Yeah. You think if he came forward and, and tried to fight it, 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 I think it would have been worse. If I don't know if he's doing the right thing or not by not talking about it. The, yeah, no, no. He, know, he, I would say that's got to be because if he addresses it at all, it, it, it would just open up a huge. You know, if he comes out and says, "Look, you know, I did wrong," but if he comes out and starts to deny, you know, because uh, think what it takes for a woman. Say you're a woman that he drugged and had sex with when you were 20 years old, 
when you were on vacation somewhere. And here it is 20 years later, 30 years later, you got three kids and a husband and you're living a lovely life. Do you really want to raise your hand and come forward? And like, oh, there's already 20 girls. They don't need me. I wonder how many are saying there's already 20 girls. They don't need me, you know. Yeah. So who knows? Uh, we'll, we'll see. It's going to be interesting to see how it, uh, how it comes to, uh, to an end. <clears throat> he hasn't been formally accused of anything. Right? No, he no. hasn't. It's just... No. It's conjecture so far. It's a lot of accusations. It's a lot of people to come forward. It has been. There's also been a few that have already been disproved. And right. I like Is how that anyone right? like totally disproved. Yeah. And uh, another thing, I like the uh, the thing people do, and you did it too. When people talk about Bill Cosby, they all stay, they make these vilifying things. They go, and then they parentheses. I'm not sure if he's guilty or not. But that's funny. Public opinion has already indicted this man. That's oh yeah. yeah. So you know, <clears throat> yeah. The social media was like. Quick. No, but no, I, I was, you know, I didn't, you don't want to go with it, but yeah. after X amount, you know, I don't think 20 girls are lying. I really don't, you know. That's and of the course, there's going to be a certain yeah. amount of, that are going to come across, come yeah. forward that are full of crap, right. you know, and now they're writing their book, you know, that's that's the hell of the whole thing, you know. Well, here's the other thing, like, uh, and, and from a business standpoint, all these things, Bill Cosby had his fingers in a lot of pies, no pun intended. <laughs> oh! <laughs> That, that's that's <laughs> shitty writing. Don't 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 think that's a that's joke. Perfect. <laughs> but he, he does. I mean, if if Bill Cosby had every endorsement on a jacket, he'd look like a race car driver. I mean, he would. And it's, from a business standpoint, he's a cash cow. All these people invested. You don't think they're not going to protect their cash cow? Right. Well, they cut a lot of people. Cut ties already with them. You know, Temple University dropped them. That was a big. But how long? He's seventy seven now. Like oh, eight, no, he's I, eighty, isn't he? He's no, 77. No. And, I, I, you know, I'll, I'll take, all right, I can, I can do this in my 30s, well into my 70s, and then I'll get caught, and then I'll be dead. All right, cool. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, but no, it's just. You know, I mean, he got, you know, if he got caught, and he's just, he's just riding it out. But now, we'll, so. we'll, we'll never, public opinion, uh, you yeah. know, anything that you can say, like, you, you, you are in the spotlight more than any of us in this room, so, and public opinion is, and that's not just the truth, you know, public opinion, if somebody comes forward with something, even if it's a little something, they already think you're guilty. And oh. that's just the way it is. Oh, you know, all those years on the Stern Show, and I still to this day can't believe it never happened. Like if somebody called up and said, hey, I met, I'm not talking about uh, abusing somebody, but if a girl called the show and said, hey, I met Jackie at a club last night and we went in my car and, had, and he had sex with me, even if she was totally lying, guilty. Yeah. You yeah know? And things like I, that do I, take place. Right. Yeah. And, and it's like, you know, it's, it becomes he said, she said, even though nothing ever, ever happened. But luckily, that never happened. You but know? even like, like, you know, devil's advocate and all that, 20 or 30 girls? Like, really? 20 or 30? Like, you could say five or six. That bitch is lying. It's well, just... Jackie, it's <laughs> yeah, already... That's why I said when it got to be 16 like, or 17. You know, like, you can yeah. devil advocate. Yeah, after a while, you got, Bill, come on, man. Exactly. It's already trending that you had sex with Linda Lou a half an hour ago. Oh, of course. It's already oh, out there on Twitter. <laughs> it's in the universe. Which is great. Which is great to hear. <laughs> Carl started that, by oh, the way. You know, he's 77. It's just like, we got that Nazi yeah, criminal. Look yeah. at that 95-year-old man. We yeah. got him. You know, yeah. he killed yeah. 4 million people in 1943, and now he's 95 years old. We're going to show him. Yeah. You know. <laughs> Jeez, you know. We haven't forgotten. We Going haven't. to the chair looking like the cat that ate the mouse. <laughs> <laughs> we're uh, we're going to take a break here on the uh, Rock and Comedy Show, and uh, we'll be back, everybody. Fool's Gold from uh, Jackie the Joke Man. We play that a lot. I love that. That's at the end of my CD, Come Again, which is the best of all the old shows at Rascal's Comedy Hour, 1990. And... Uh, I have six CDs out on Olio Records, all available on Amazon and iTunes. And my friend Carl Olio from the president and CEO of Olio Records brought me over here today and just passed out Snart. If you're wondering what Snart means, I maintain that telling filthy jokes on stage is an art. Because I'm not a comedian. I just tell dirty jokes, but I maintain it's an art. Snart. Snart. <laughs> so that's that. And, so, uh, nice. and also, people like jokes. Linda Lou just told me a filthy joke. <laughs> Oh, we missed out. What, 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 Go ahead, what was me, the joke? Tell him your joke, Linda Lou. This was my favorite joke when I was a kid, and I actually sent it to Johnny Carson even because I thought it was so hysterical. <laughs> How did Captain Hook die? How did Captain Hook die, Linda Lou? He wiped himself with the wrong hand. Oh, that's a beautiful word picture. <laughs> well, if you want to get a joke like that, you know what? Maybe I'll go home and put it on for tomorrow. 
I tweet a joke every day at 4.20 p.m. International Marijuana Time. <laughs> so if you follow me on nice. Twitter, at yeah. Jackie Martling, mm-hmm. J-A-C-K-I-E-M-A-R-T-L-I-N-G, you get a joke automatically every day, 4.20 p.m. Sometimes they're good, sometimes they're bad, sometimes they're foul as hell. <laughs> but it's always fun. I'm up to like 30,000 people, and it's good fun. But uh, right now on the uh, Rock and Comedy Show, it's time for the best of Christmas. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Jar of belly button lit for free. He's here. On He's here. He's that guy right there. Oh, yeah. I found a new name, son. <laughs> oh. All right, so here we go with the uh, best of Craigslist. Our first one from New York titled, You came to my party and threw up all over my bathroom floor and halls in the uh, missed connection section. <laughs> I don't know why you would hunt this person down, but apparently it says, uh, it took me about two hours on Sunday morning, myself hung over too. Uh, it took talent and not a little panache to completely uh, annihilate this tiny room of your uh, called bathroom. You even soaked the basket of towels my roommate keeps some four feet away from the toilet. But I'm wondering, hey, want to get a drink sometime? <laughs> wow. Why would you... After all that, go, oh, by the way. I have a lot of Altoids. <laughs> That's rough. That's not good. I'll give this next one to... Uh, well, That's desire. Yeah. That's, the, yeah, That's it. desire. There you go. Oh, I'm going to read it? Okay, oh, cool, yes. cool. Oh, boy, here we Are go. Are you going to tell your poor, hapless guests what the hell is going on? What is that? That's the best of Craigslist. And, uh, oh, what the we best do of is, Craigslist. Yeah, yeah. We, we pick... Uh, sometimes they leave some of the, uh, the best... Uh, Misconnections, like I saw you on a bus. Best of And I noticed that you looked at me. So people go on there. I don't know. So people go on there and say, hey, you were at a stoplight in Philadelphia at uh, Hollywood and Vine, and we winked, and I never saw you again. If you see this call, right. is that the they, kind of thing? Like, yeah, yeah. Kind of, shots in the dark. And I, st- never, I never thought Craigslist was for dating, apparently. You can get, you know, like give free stuff away, like couches and things, or you can buy cars and then all of a sudden it was like, oh, there's a dating section. I don't think it's actually dating. A boy game, whatever you want to call it, Linda. <laughs> this is, it's no. just called, uh, whatever please the rob and kill me. That's, yeah, that's what it is. It's yes, called. you can be murdered on Craigslist. Could you please give me your address and tell me when you're not going to be home? <laughs> you know, it was a great story that went around in the 60s. You might remember this, Gary. It was like some guy living in suburbia <clears throat> came home one day or, or, or walked out one day and his car was missing. And he, he freaked out and called the cops and everything like that. But then all of a sudden, the car appeared back in the driveway. And on the, on the dashboard was an envelope. And he opened up and said, so sorry, I can't really explain. But I really needed to borrow your car. And I'm sorry if it inconvenienced you. Here's two tickets to My Fair Lady or whatever was the hippest Broadway play at the time. And the guy was like, what the hell? And the guy and his wife went to the play. When they came home, his house was empty. Oh, <laughs> they, they, oh, have you ever oh. heard that story? I know it's an urban myth, but that's such a great story. You know, oh, you know hey, he took my car, but what the hell? I'm going to Broadway. <laughs> Sorry. Go ahead. Uh, Go ahead, Bobby. All right. Let's see here. Midnight girl in PJ bottoms and slippers at Walgreens. Uh <laughs> You had braided black hair and a turtleneck sweater. I had just woken up and was trying to remember what I had to come in for. You were playing with the singing kung fu hamsters at the register waiting to buy your items. I was watching you from over by the Cheetos. I made some rustling noises. Someone was following me. And with the bags to get your attention. And we had a brief moment of eye contact before the woman started ringing you up. I made some rustling noises with the chips, but you didn't look over. I started really looking at it with a couple of... Doritos bags, hoping maybe you'd come investigate, but you still didn't look and walked out. I was going to follow you, but I was unfortunately and unlawfully unlawfully detained by a Walgreens employee before I could get out. Maybe we could meet up at the high tide sometime. Oh, that's, that's I, I was this think- is the Midwest version of Penthouse Four. This is the Midwest. <laughs> this is- I think it's funny though that you have brief. They have a brief eye contact and. They're going to go home and be like, oh, I wonder who that was. And they're going to just check Craigslist to find out if that was their soul. Let me ask you a question. I'll ask you, Bobby. If you have brief eye contact with a girl and you think she's cute, 
would you try and catch some more eye contact or would you look down and crunch your Doritos? <laughs> Unless that's a euphemism for doing something else. I don't know. Oh, wow. she made me crunch my Dorito. I really like those Doritos. Uh, <laughs> Creeping around like that. Yeah. 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 You ever hear that story of the Walmart Ranch. greeter? There's a Walmart greeter and a woman walks in the store with a five-year-old and ten-year-old kid. And the greeter says, uh, lady, are they twins? She says, what do you mean, are they twins? He's five and she's ten. Why would you think they were twins? And the guy says, you're so ugly. I can't believe anybody fucked you twice. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Down the pipe. <laughs> That's a great joke. <laughs> what about you, Bruce? Have you ever used Craigslist for uh, dating purposes? Uh, I'm just going to say, has anyone ever fucked you twice? Uh, <laughs> oh. I am guilty of the occasional uh, casual encounter. Uh, not in this town, because this town is weird like that. I don't, I don't trust anything out here at all. Right. Yeah, you don't need Craigslist in Vegas. You need the, you <laughs> all you need in Vegas is the green door. That's it. Or, or the Wild Wild West. <laughs> you know what I want is Bill's Even then. list. I want Bill's list. <laughs> Angie's list is completely different. Oh, yeah. yeah. Comes not highly recommended. Yeah, right? yeah. Different Angie. Different Angie. <laughs> I've never done that Craigslist thing, but I really have talked to lots of people that said they've gone on Craigslist and met people and gotten laid and no harm, no foul. Uh, people nice have gotten people. great jobs out of it, I know, but I've yeah, never used jobs, it. Jobs, buying used furniture, it's great. But, but my, my, dating not. My roommate, <laughs> so my, my roommate found an apartment and another roommate at his last his last lease yeah. on Craigslist. Because the Craigslist ad yeah. said, room comes with roommate. Yeah, oh. yeah a girl that delivers a sofa and gives you a blowjob. There, there you go. There you go. <laughs> Craigslist. I got fucked buying a futon once, so you know, you never know. <laughs> but that wasn't on Craigslist. <laughs> she was rushing, it was good. <laughs> she probably wanted to get it over quick. Whoa. Oh. 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 I could never open a futon, close a futon, or spell futon. So I gave up on futon. Yeah, I had to uh, get a discount, though, because of the stain. Man. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I'm in a movie called Disco. It's so funny, like years ago when I got off the show, I started doing these independent movies. And people say, you like in doing independent movies? I said, yep. And I'm going to keep doing independent movies until one of them comes out. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so many of them go nowhere. But I'm actually, I have a good role in this. Uh, I'm the guy that's uh, pulling off the scam and the reveals at the end. So it's going to be so long from now, it doesn't matter that I spoiled it for the three people that might ever see it. I watch independent movies. It's great fun. You know, I still go to Cannes and Sundance and places like that. It was so much fun, you know. Wow. Well, it is uh, the Rugged Comedy Show coming up in just a few minutes. Bobby Slayton's going to be here. Bobby Slayton. I, I ran into him on the way out of South Point, and he said that he'll be over here as quick as he can get here. Yeah, he's fun, very funny. We can't wait to have him here. We're uh, going to take a very quick break, and uh, we'll be right back. I did some mushrooms. Did some mushrooms. I waxed my legs. Waxed my legs. Oh, I miss you. You know, my movie career has been so illustrious. You were in 20 minutes. I was in 20 seconds. But this is 14 movies movies I'm talking about, 20 minutes. That movie Bandits, which nobody saw, it came out the week of 9-11, along with Mike Binder's show, Mind of the Married Man. Everything was postponed. I was supposed to do a Howard show. I was coming to me and Joe Rogan roping a a comedy club in Madison Square Garden. And so, you know, 9-11 hits, and I'm feeling really bad for myself. There goes Howard Stern. There goes Good Morning America. There goes the Bandits premiere. And then I see the people jumping out of the window on fire, holding hands. And I said, maybe... Things aren't so bad. Not so bad. So we do this movie Bandits. And I, I, have, I have four or five scenes. I have, you think your life's up. I got one great, one great scene with Bruce Willis where he comes in and he punches me in the face. Him and Billy Bob Thornton break into my house. I had a few other scenes, but this is the best scene. We ad-libbed it. There was a stunt guy showed me how to take a punch, and it was so great. I'm getting all beat up, and I can't wait to see this. So now it's not in the movie. They cut the scene out. But when they came out on DVD with all the deleted scenes, I wasn't even in those. I was deleted ah! from, from the, the deleted, deleted scenes. Ah! So that's pretty much the story of my career in a, in, a, in, a, in a nutshell. 
Wow. Anyway, it took me longer to get here from the South Point than it did to make the drive from Los Angeles. You know, <laughs> between the traffic out there. And you know who really fucked up is Waze, one of the greatest apps. You have Waze? It's mm-hmm. the greatest app ever. It tells you how to get around traffic. It sent me it sent me back like, like through Reno or Lofton or something. <laughs> I, it sent me in a giant loop. It took me like 45 minutes to get here to do your dumb show. And now I have to go. <laughs> Thank you for <laughs> being here on my dumb show. And the drive it took, from- it took you longer to get here than your total time in the movies. Yes. And the drive from LA could have been longer than the drive from LA. Which, you know, I was telling you earlier when I saw you at the hotel, it's mind numbing. You know, you take that drive from LA and it's okay. It's just boring. And, but after like two hours, it just starts to grate on you. It's like watching two Dane Cook specials back to back. It's not, it's not hard. It, it's it a, not going to hurt you, but it just really begins to pound on your head like a fucking gremlin. Talking to you, you a migraine. Is it a straight shot from LA? Just yes, like yes, zoom? It, it, just like, like you have 15, nothing there. Yeah. Nothing. 15, yeah. So it's meditation. You, you, did you want to say something? I, I'm just enjoying Okay, it. fine, thank you. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, let's get back to Subway. Me and Jackie, I don't think in all the years, I, I think maybe 80 years of stand-up between the two of us, how long have you been oh doing Oh, my that? God. Well, I, I, I count 36 in, in, no. officially, but they, that doesn't count the eight years I spent trying to get to the comedy stage. You oh, know, wait, as a so musician. You, you actually took eight years off? No, no, no. I was, I was, I was playing in a band from 71 oh, right. to 79, for no apparent reason. You know what Rodney used to say? I quit music and to tell you how good I was doing, I was the only one who knew I quit. Remember that? <laughs> <laughs> right? yeah. and, so, uh, so 36 years. Like I've been doing it about 38. So, okay, we have close to uh, 80 years. And the disturbing John, what exactly does he do? I don't, I don't know. I mean, I imagine he does some comedy. Did you just ask me a question? Yes. Oh, I didn't hear it. <laughs> I know, everybody keeps asking me. I don't know. I, I left the show before he was doing stand-up, and I know he's been doing it all over, and he does well. I think he makes a lot of money doing it so i'm sure he's good i'm sure he's great but do i know what he does no well we'll find out friday saturday won't we to, 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 to choose go into a go into a park <laughs> it should be a lot of fun it should be and by the way well his one joke t- takes yeah, eight t- minutes, t- yeah. ten minutes. <laughs> it's such a cheap shop and true. by the way that's south point i've not been in there a long time i like that hotel it's, I see why the locals go there. You go there, Rocking Jay? You yeah. Anybody here? You go? Yeah. That's a great hotel. And, and I, you know, when I first came here years ago, when I was living here, and I had my little residency at Hooters, I never knew why people, I go to the Strip, you know, it's really great, but locals would never go to the Strip. And I, I, it took me a few months to realize why locals never went to the, it's a, such a goddamn nightmare. I mean, there's nothing, it gets worse and worse and worse. And, it, you know, when I used to do that joke about, you know, it's like the fattest city in America, that's why it seems so crowded. Because it's half as crowded as it really is, just so many fat Everybody's people. Everybody's this big. Right, it's like Disneyland. It's, like Disneyland. it's not really that crowded. <laughs> but it's, it's amazing. And at least at the South Point, there, there's no Mexicans with the hooker trading cards. There's no <laughs> homeless people dressed up like, like SpongeBob, Fat Face, whatever his name is, <laughs> fighting Spider-Man. I actually have a picture that I, I couldn't believe it. I, I made the cab driver stop years ago. It's a picture of an Elvis impersonator taking a picture of another Elvis impersonator with a tourist. It's, it's, it's a priceless photo. Oh, all right. Well, the last time I was here on the Strip playing some comedy club, not to be named now because we're, it's a South Point, but I was on the Strip and I go out of my hotel and Minnie Mouse is having a fight with another Minnie Mouse. Because obviously the Minnie Mice are fighting because I guess, and then Mickey comes over. Maybe he was the pimp. He was like, <laughs> he comes over to break up the fight and I guess they're fighting because this was Minnie Mouse's territory not the other Minnie Mouse and I didn't know which was the real Minnie Mouse because they both you know look like Minnie Mouse had to be probably one. weren't even girls <laughs> that's why you don't see that many homeless people on the strip because half of these assholes are dressed up like Batman <laughs> New York has gotten unbelievable. They're dressed up as everything. There's people dressed up as homeless. I mean, it's like crazy. Homeless people they're dressed, they're dressed up, up as homeless. Yeah. So they're really homeless. Yeah, you want to, no, no. Honey, I'm going to the CES show. That was such a right. great scam. You know, there was one porn star. She won a Lifetime Achievement Award <laughs> one year. And, uh, well, I, you know, the first year I hosted it, Jenna Jameson was my co-star. And she was 21 years old. And she was the starlet, uh, you know, the, the newcomer, up and comer, you know. And she was uh, the new hot starlet. She had done a couple of movies. So I'm standing backstage with her. She was gorgeous. I don't know what she did to her face. She, she looks like, and to her boobs, she went like this and then like this. She kept I, I, making. She looks very odd. He looks like Bruce Jenner. Or he looks like her. I don't know. But, <laughs> they so, they so, passed in the night. She's 21 years old. And I think my daughter was probably 10 at the time. And, you know, 21. And her father's backstage with her. And I said to her father, kind of very facetiously, but I didn't want to see him too demeaning. I said, you must be so proud of your daughter. Oh, and he, totally straight face, he was beaming. Like the kid just won a, 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 a Rhodes oh, a scholarship somewhere at Harvard. And, oh, he was so proud of his Do daughter. Do you remember what happened on the Howard Stern show with Jenna and her father? 
Jenna was on the Stern Show with her father. And, you know, it was a great interview. This is when she was, you know, she was just young. So she was voluptuous and had just the right size boobs. Later on, she made these balloons. But they left. And I came up with an idea. And I said the idea to Howard. And he said, Gary, Gary, bring them back in. And we showed, because she, she said that her girlfriends, the other porn stars, would come over her house and hang out and hit on her father. So he's got a porn star daughter, and he's banging her friends. It's like he died and went to heaven. We took three pictures of snatches and showed them to her father and asked him if he could pick out his daughter's pussy. And, of course, one out of three chance. And But he did it, and he picked her out. You know, I mean, it was it was... Nobody oh. could believe it was unbelievable. You know, it sounds really creepy, but when you hear about Charles Manson getting married and Bill Cosby is now a rapist, that sounds like a pretty normal thing. To yeah. <laughs> compared to when you think of ISIS beheading people, you go, "Hey, you picked out your daughter's pussy." Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. a good father. Yeah. Yeah. You came yeah, up I mean, with it's that not game. the worst thing in the world. Yeah, nothing oh. I would do. He but, walked past the chow. Do you yeah. know there was one woman oh. who won? Uh, this, uh, Avian, she won. Uh, she won an award. She uh, she set the record for gangbang. And it was, her name was Jasmine St. Clair. I think somebody has, oh. Oh. somebody's better. Somebody beat her. But she, <laughs> she gangbanged, I think, 300 guys at one time. So I'm going to announce her. I'm, I'm doing some joke about it since I'm hosting the show. And I said, uh, Jasmine St. St. Clair's won an award, you know, for gangbanging over 300 guys. <laughs> since she wants to do more family films, so she's going to do a movie for Disney where she gangbangs 101 Dalmatians. Now, <laughs> the producer came up to me and said she was very upset by that joke. She oh, was mad oh at me God. for doing that joke after she fucks <laughs> over 300 guys. Yeah, what do you think, I'm weird? <laughs> that upset her. <laughs> that upset her, her sensibilities. That was the you, line. You, you know, at the AVN Awards, <laughs> you know, if you go to a convention, they take you up into a suite and they'll give you like a, a CD player or whatever at the CES show or they give you a flash drive at the AVN Awards they'll take you up and one of the things they do is is the porn co- companies will have a bed and there'll be a guy and a girl or two girls or whatever getting it on on the bed and you're allowed to take movies of it and that's their tchotchke that you not to, <laughs> to make, <laughs> right, party to make a tchotchke <laughs> so I was at the, I went into that octagon bar at the Venetian and this Really cute girl came over and she started talking. I, I don't know if she's flirting with me or what, but she was a fan and we're talking and we're kind of snuggling up and laughing. And I kind of see people looking over and they're kind of smirking. The night before, she had been in one of those rooms and like 40 guys jizzed on her. They had a bukkake, and I'm sitting there snuggling up to this girl. And everybody else in the room had jizzed on her. The night Why is it that I posted this thing? Four or five times, and I never get invited to these parties. You know, every morning when I post the Avians or been a guest, you know, performer, I check out the next morning, and somebody says, to me, How come you weren't at the party last night? You know, we're doing blow out of Jasmine St. Clair. We, we, we had piles of blow, and, and all these hookers would give them blow jobs. And what, what? I, I was in my room watching porn on my You were watching them on your TV. Yeah, 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 paying for it. yeah we're starting lines, waiting in line for our blow jobs. Like, wait, where was that room? You know, what room was that? Yeah, you know? I never get invited to that stuff, ever. You're like, oh, mm-hmm. she's on the fourth floor. You're turning the channel. <laughs> you know, to show you what a married pussy I am, Mr. Big Pitbull of Comedy. So one year, uh, well, I, got, I forgot her name. She won a Lifetime Achievement Award. And um, she was a, it's really hot. You got to be to win a Lifetime Achievement Award. Of, of course. course. <laughs> so she wins the award. And after the show, she says to me, what are you doing? And I said, I think I'm going to go to see Metallica. I'm waiting for Lars, the drummer. I'm trying to get a hold of him. She goes, you know, it's funny because I have backstage passes. And I'm blowing this limo driver. So I got a free ride. You want to go with me? I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. So... We go. And was, you blew the limo. Why do <laughs> well, you have to ruin my story? Oh, you know, no, no, no. <laughs> that would have been good. I mean, I'm going to embellish your story with that the next time I tell it on a real radio show. Uh, so we go backstage, and I'm hanging out. Lifetime Achievement Award. And I think we're doing some blow, and we're, we're hanging out with Metallica. And, and then we get back in the limo, and we're going back to the hotel where I'm staying. She's going to drop me off, and she says to me, what do you want to do now? And I said, well, I think I'm just going to go back to the hotel and eat. And I went into the coffee shop at the Riviera, and I'm sitting there with a Heineken and a cheeseburger, and I said, wait a second. Bing! I just did blow with the Lifetime Achievement Award porn star backstage at a rock and roll concert. You don't get more rock and decadent than this. And she said to me, what do you want to do now? And I'm eating a fucking cheeseburger. Then She I, said, what do you want to do now? In the limo. Okay, yeah, this is great. Now, I'm thinking what a great husband I am because what kind of guy would not you know, go after this? And, and, but I'm being the good husband that I am. I go back to my room. I don't tell my wife the story, but I'm writing a book now where I have little stories about you know hosting this and doing that. And I have this, that story in there. And my wife reads the article. 
York you know, reads the chapter. She never told me about that. Never. Why do you tell me about that? You do, you're a porn star. You do a blow with her. I said, well, I didn't fuck her. She said, yeah, yeah, but you were doing that. I go, well, that's why I didn't tell you. Imagine if I did fuck her. You know, I mean, you think my wife would have been very proud of me. Any wife. But broads are not, you're not like that. You've got to get broads. No, she thinks that you wrote the story and conveniently left that out. No, I wouldn't. Uh, yeah, no, because the thing did happen with you. I did blow the limo driver. <laughs> that, that even would have pissed her it's off. Weird when you, you know, I'm writing a book too, and you don't know where to stop and where to start. You know, I, you don't want to piss off anybody, but the, there's certain things I don't want to put in my book because I don't want to lose my friends. I don't you know, just <laughs> the, the horrible things, not sex. Just and change I, the name. You know, you know. You know what? I have stuff in my book, and some of it is borderline between. Uh, you don't want to sound like Pat Cooper, where you hate everybody, and everybody caused the downfall <laughs> of your career, and this guy sucks. <laughs> but when you get on a roll, you know. But then you start looking like a whiny old bitter Jew, which I am, which I am. <laughs> but I don't want to you know if I want to have it in writing. <laughs> South Point. We haven't mentioned that in like ten minutes. <laughs> Mention it again. Saturday, Friday, Saturday. Friday, Saturday. Yeah, Friday, Saturday night, seven thirty. Tickets are cheap, like twenty, thirty bucks. Twenty bucks, me. Jackie the Joke Man, get a joke at Jackie Martling and Slayton and John Suttering John Melenzas with the uh, with the mystery show. The now, mystery show. what else is really in town? Sinbad, who's my that's my fan base right there. Sinbad, you know, so he's in town. If you want to see some nice family clean comedy, you go see that guy. You want to take it one step even more retarded? Go see the guy at the puppet. You know, doing really clean comedy. He's got that puppet. <laughs> yeah, by my son, he's really great for. He's great for like. 15, 10 minutes. Which puppet guy? The puppet guy. What's his name? Terry Fader. Oh, the, the, the oh, other oh. puppet. Oh, yeah. He jumped up. Jumped up. Jumped up. Yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. What Dunham. about David? What's his name? Is he still around? Oh, my God. That guy? Do you remember him? Yeah, he's probably doing cruise ships. I do know, yeah. David. He was the big puppet guy. He was great, you know, and he... Uh, David Strassman. David Strassman. He was yeah. great at, for a puppet guy. You know, you gotta you gotta qualify it. A, a good, a good, bad, <laughs> great for a good nasty attitude. You know, he had he, he didn't have the puppet guy, you know, a clean. You know, he was like a, a wise guy with a puppet. You know, you know I didn't he realize, was an Otto, but he was you know. I didn't realize that Otto and George. You know, when Joe Franklin, you guys probably don't even know Joe Franklin. He died. He was a big New York institution. <laughs> he started the whole talk show. Uh, you know. On, on Cowboy before Carson and Jack Parr and all those guys Joe Franklin so I, I know he's a really good friend yeah, he said point a camera at me I'm going to talk to somebody he said that's they told him that's not a show and he said yes it is it was amazing because <laughs> he'd have nobody's wannabes and then the Jay Giles band you never know who would be on that giant movie stars and then but I, I somebody posted a picture about it with George he must have been a teenager because Otto was like busking when he was in like 73 or something really? like, like millions of years ago he was on he the was street doing stuff and, was I, he dirty though I think he was always, you know, the you know story, the story about, about the guy, the, the mobster, like stabbing George and cutting out his hand and all that stuff. I don't yeah. know how apocryphal those stories are. But Joe Franklin had Elvis Presley and Ann Margaret Olsen on the same show. That's where Elvis met Ann Margaret. Really? Elvis was so nervous, he left his guitar case at Joe's studio. He wow. took, left with his guitar and left the guitar case. <laughs> wow. Barbara Streisand. I got a picture right on my phone. I'll show it to you. Barbara Streisand and Joe's holding up her album, you know. Wow. What a legend. Do you want to say something to anybody else? Okay, yeah, your chance. Maybe next break. Listen, you here, I can't even get in a word, Ed Dries, and I'm a, I'm a loud mouth, so God bless that. Oh, 15 minutes later. Well, I would just say, I made that drive, and I've been talked for hours, and it was, it was, it was it, you know, holed up inside of me. Oh, yeah, you know, I'll sit around my house all day, and then I'll go for a sandwich, and the poor deli guy, you know, you do 10 minutes talking to the guy. I'm sorry, you're the first human being, you know. I mean, David Say used to go, he walks around his house, and when he's got a show that night, he'll go, hello, hello, like he's doing a sound check. <laughs> he, he was so funny. Hello, hi, folks, hello. Just making sure his mouth worked, you know. You, you see what happens when right? you and I stop talking? The show is fucking dead. Oh, stop. <laughs> Not a goddamn thing going on here, Jackie. We're, we're just wondering if we can jump in and we say We just want you to be comfortable. I'm smoking pot, smoking pot. I got my dick out. One of the biggest songs Jackie's ever done right there. And I'm thinking about you, I'm Frank. Thinking about you. on the guitar, one of the all-time greats. It's like, uh, as Otto would say, it was like whipped cream on dog shit. You right. Know? You're not going to be doing that this weekend at the South Point, I hope. Uh, I you mean, mean, I don't... you mean the 7:30 show Friday and the 7:30 show Saturday? I'm not telling you, do whatever you want. I might do it just to piss you off. You and me and stuttering John Melendez. It doesn't take a lot to piss me off. No, no. People ask my wife what pisses Bobby off. My wife says air. <laughs> Waking up. Everything. Everything. <laughs> you know, I mean, I was in no hurry to get out here from Los Angeles when I drove out today, but I came out a little extra early to do your rockin' 
comedy show, whatever the hell you call it. But, uh, you know, if there's somebody doing 60, 70, whatever it is in that left lane and they won't get out of the way, I want them to die. I want their car to blow up. And I want it to disintegrate them and their children and their dog because it's just certain rules of the road and my wife will always go, why don't you just go around them? Because that's not how it works. That piece of shit's supposed to get out of my way. Right. Whether you're in a hurry or not, it's just a principle. You make a right turn on a red light, you get out of my way in the left lane or die. On that note, Bobby, it's been nice yeah, having you here. Yeah. Um, He's got to take off. I'm glad I'm not going to be on the road in front of him. I got to go do, I don't know what I have to do. But it's you like, got to eat with me. We got a free meal. Yeah, I over, I've already overstayed my, my welcome, and, and I know there's news to do, and you got to talk more about your physio energy drinks. And, and, <laughs> <laughs> Zip fizz. It seems to be worse. Pretty yeah, good. Jackie's yes. got to do some more stuff. And, anyway, I'll see you uh, Friday. I will be South there. Point, Absolutely. Right? No puppets, no kids, no bullshit, no Spider Man. Well, maybe I won't come. Stuttering <laughs> dick jokes and anger. That's, right, that's thanks what we're having me on. Give it up for Bobby Slayton, everybody. Bobby. Right on. Yeah. I'm what so thrilled we're here, Slayton. We're going to have a great time. All right, pal. I'll see, see you guys later. Thank you. Hey, you know what I need now? Some news. Italian oh, food. <laughs> There's an intro. As he exits, yes. <laughs> the Jew with the news. It is the Rock and Comedy Show News. And now, here comes Crazy Jay to read some stuff. And give it up for Scott, who, uh, who does that, everybody. The man, the voice of the Rock and Comedy Show right there. Way to go. <laughs> First time uh, he came on the show, he was uh, he he did an independent movie. What was it? The the, the doll movie, right? Doll named Charlotte. Yep. Yeah, and uh, he had such an incredible voice when I was DJing. I'm like, I need to use you for the uh, for the show. So he, yeah, he's been doing the intros now for what? Four, four, five. Four or five years. Yeah, it sounds awesome. Wow, great. So that is him. Everybody's like, that guy sounds black, and then they meet him, and it's like, <laughs> way off. How are you? It's good to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> But it is uh, not me doing the news today. It's Linda, everybody. Linda. It's me. Let's go Linda deep Lou. into Linda Lou. Yes. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> this is, this is new we are starting off today. A New Mexico woman drove a van for more than 13 years without realizing there was marijuana hidden inside. This uh, woman bought a 1990 Chevy van at a local dealership in 2001. Let's do some math here. How old is that van now? <laughs> so she would have room to transport her, her daughter's children. Until Friday, she had no idea that on trips to softball games and vacations out of town, she had been transporting 13 and a half pounds of marijuana hidden in one of the vehicle's <laughs> doors. Wow. A family friend discovered the marijuana when he opened the when he removed a door panel to repair a broken handle. Inside a hole cut in the door were five bricks of marijuana covered in plastic wrap and foil. Five bricks. Bricks wow. of it. It's like Tommy Chong's car. <laughs> Alas, this is not a happy ending. This oh, no. This is what a, a Grandma officer. got busted. No, even worse. Oh, police say the marijuana is so old that it's worthless. Oh. 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 Man. Who knew? Who this knew it had a shelf life, story. right? Why, wow. I think the van had a shelf life. Well, I, I can't believe the van's still running. It's a 1990 van. Now, what would happen? Would it just be so, like, just crumble? Lose its potency? Maybe. Probably 15 years ago, the pot was a lot worse, too. So, <laughs> Don't guys always kind of, like, check their, their suit pockets for roaches? Like, if you... If yeah, you but you don't wear... usually check the, the inside of the door. Yeah, right, right. But, I mean, you find something, like, months later, you haven't worn the jacket since last time you went to a wake or something. Right, right, right. And then you go to a wedding, you're like, ooh, hello. Yeah. You got to bring a joint to a funeral? <laughs> it's, certainly not well. the, it's certainly not the stuff <laughs> that my, uh, my neighbor smokes. What kind of people that? do you know? You, you'd smell that coming through the, <laughs> my, the uh, door panel. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I grew some great homegrown, and I put it in a baggie, and then put the baggie in another baggie, and I went to a party a couple months ago, and I walked in. Oh, no, I got on the subway. And all of a sudden, I'm like, Jesus Christ, how could that party? You know, I, and then, you know, I, I walked into the party, and somebody said, somebody's smoking weed in here. I said, mm. you know. <laughs> But, like, it, it's so crazy how it goes through two baggies. Two baggies, you know. Well, mason but, jars work pretty good. Well, you know, that's, that works. You the, know. the first car my parents ever bought me when I was really young, when I was, like, I just got out of high school, uh, my father was a police officer for 26 years. Bought, they bought it at an auction. 
you know, because he had friends in the department and everything. And uh, so I'm, I'm like a clean cut kid going to college, going to community college. I get, I open one of my buddies opens up the ashtray behind the console, and there's like a huge roach clip in there. <laughs> and I remember bringing it in. My father had, oh man, it was almost, it was like back when that was a huge thing. My mother went so crazy. We had an old DeSoto, and you know the the floor mats in the in the back seat are like, uh, you know, like this weird whatever you'd call it, weird kind of rug, which is actually the exact kind of thing where you, where you start plants in, in biology. And my brother and his friends, I guess, had rolled pot or smoked pot and dropped the seeds. My mother came in furious. There was pot growing in the car because there were holes in, in the floor. So, like, the moisture came up. So it was the exact perfect growing Facility. It was like you know a rug with moisture with seeds. It was and it was white because there was no sunlight. It was like hysterical. And she's pissed off and we're laughing our ass. You know, little tiny. Yeah. <laughs> That's fantastic. Uh, anybody remember the woman who claimed she had three breasts? Oh yeah, no. that came out last well, year. Bill Cosby. <laughs> she's had twenty. Yeah. I didn't know that was coming. Um, she's been charged with drunk driving. Imagine that. Yep, she uh, once claimed she had cosmetic surgery to obtain a third breast, was arrested on a DUI charge in Tampa on Monday morning. Um, Most people wouldn't care about the drunk driving, but she is a little bit unique with that third breast. She had told media outlets she spent about $20,000 on surgery to make herself less attractive to men. We we can only imagine how attractive she was to begin with, right? Where is it? It's is right. it in the middle? Yeah, is it's it right on her yeah. back? Yeah, it's right in the middle. And you'd think with three tits, you'd get out of a ticket. Yeah, like, like Cyclops two woman. Two is enough, right? Well, two they, is the standard. They, 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 could... they proved last year that that was just like it's, a... It's uh, a prosthetic. Yeah, it's a prosthetic. That's yeah. right. Her, it's not, like, a, like yeah. something she straps on or something. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Her dubious <laughs> claim came under fire after various pieces of evidence pointed it to being a total lie. Oh, Yes, evidently that middle breast was a different color than the two on the other side <laughs> and looked to be more like a stuffed nylon sock than something covered in human skin. My baby wants to take it to another level. She's going to put on a black breast tonight, <laughs> and we're going to have some fun. I just want to thank all of you for not doing the whole Total Recall joke. I appreciate that. Oh, <laughs> thank you all for not doing that. Thanks. We were, we were doing it. We just didn't say it. Yes, we were all thinking it. Just thank you. <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. The movie Total Recall, Schwarzenegger. There's yeah. a scene that's in there. It's like a sci-fi movie. Oh, oh, and was that the, and in the, the bar? Had, yeah, the woman, woman with, the with a bunch of them, right? Exactly. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I love that she got it to make herself look less attractive because we could just imagine, right? Because we don't yeah. like tits. <laughs> Uh, have you I have two cocks. <laughs> <laughs> Black nylons on the second one, right? Is this something about your nipples? Can you, baby, can you just put on the one with the nice nipple? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> like, what if your fake titty is nicer than the other ones? Exactly. <laughs> That's just <laughs> asking for trouble. They, they don't match. They don't match. Have you heard about the zombie cat? The cat that returned from the grave. Oh, yeah, this is great. Yes, a Florida feline has been dubbed a zombie cat after clawing his way out of an untimely grave. The cat's owner, uh, Ellie Hudson, 52, told ABC News he found his pet, Bart, in in the road a couple of weeks ago. Bart seemed to have been hit by a car, was lying in a pool of blood, and he said he was sure the cat was dead. Because in he and the animal were so close, he says he couldn't bear to bury the cat himself. He enlisted the help of his neighbor and watched him put Bart to rest, or so he thought. Days later, a bedraggled Bart, who apparently dug himself out of the ground, made his way to another neighbor's yard. I opened the door and my neighbor's standing there with a cat in her hand, Hudson told the media. She said, Bart is not dead. I said, that's impossible. We buried Bart. Hudson rushed the cat to the hospital where Bart was treated for injuries, including severe head trauma. Let's hope not from the shovel, right? A broken jaw and a dead eye. Veterinarian said that he was able to return home, although he will lose one of his eyes. That's why you got to hit them with a shovel before you bury them. <laughs> Make sure they're dead. Make sure they're dead. Can you imagine the resentment around the house with that cat? <laughs> Jeez. Because <laughs> cats are assholes to begin with. <laughs> you thought I was, you buried me alive, cocksucker. 
Yeah, who uh, would you really go to sleep with that cat in the house? Exactly. You know? Yeah, really. <laughs> like a deformed face. It's like, oh, well, it was like that one cat that terrorized, terrorized that family and locked them in the room. They wouldn't come out because they were afraid of it. <laughs> well, I mean, you hear about people that are in morgues and and they're actually alive. They start moving, and so you can imagine. Well, you know the expression "saved by the bell," right? Do you know where that comes from? They literally used to, when they buried people, there used to be a string going into the casket, going to a bell. So if the person that they buried wasn't dead, they'd pull the string and, it, and the bell would ring. That's an absolute true story, which is absolutely crazy. Look at it. You can you do the wow. Google. Saved by the bell. <laughs> Imagine you wake up and you're buried and, you, oh, let me pull the string. Ding, ding, ding. Who the hell's going to be there? You know? <laughs> Not quite dead yet. <laughs> and they pretend not to hear it if they don't like you. Right. Like good. Good. We, you got a lot of money coming. I don't hear a thing. We going to miss daddy. The angry nephew cuts the cord, right? <laughs> we didn't hear it. There was too much dirt on top. Still alive, you assholes. <laughs> yeah. so put a, put a Band-Aid on the ringer. <laughs> yeah. it's, like, it's like that scene in the Holy Grail. I'm not dead yet. You will be soon. <laughs> I'm feeling better. I don't well, remember Dad like he was. <laughs> <laughs> with the uh, with the Stern show, is there one like profound moment where you like that's like you'll never forget, like being on the show? Yeah, but it all you know, there was just so many, just so many. One of the great times we were sitting there at the show had just started, and boom, through the door came uh, Sim Kinison and oh, Pat man. McCormick. Those were always great and shows. Chuck McCann. And they, they yeah, I guess he got off stage at the comedy store and said, come on, let's go do the Stern show. And they jumped in either in a jet or Sam's jet, I don't know. And they just, the four of them, high out of their minds. And a guy from the Bob Newhart show, I forget which guy. And they were just, like, they came walking in one after the other. It's was like, holy Christ. And, that, they, you know, wow, you know. Yeah. But there were all kinds of minutes. Like, you know, the three Bee Gees sitting across from us in London all singing in harmony <sighs> two feet away from your nose. You know, like, whoa. Yeah. There was uh, there was a stern moment when uh, it was right around the first uh, OJ trial, and they were talking about uh, Nicole. It wasn't supposed to be funny, but for somehow it went. It was during the news, and they were getting ready to sign off, and they were talking about how Nicole was practically decapitated, and then uh, I don't know. This conversation ended up like, could you imagine her being in a in a whirlpool or a hot tub or something like that? And this went on. For like another 20, 30 minutes. And I think I, that was probably one of the longest Stern shows because it was like 1 o'clock in the afternoon in L.A. Oh and he was still on. And he was, and they were just going. And they it, was to, such, it was such comedy. It was as horrible as it was, it was a comedy gold mine. Oh, yeah. Like that. Who was that weird guy that was the mailman that came in? Uh, Kenneth Keith Calabac, whatever yeah. the guy was. Oh, I remember that guy cut his own hair and ate it. It's like, oh. He, he did the he Channel just, 9 show a lot. Oh, he did it a lot. Yeah, he Is was, he alive? No, no. He passed away a couple years ago. Yeah, I, I heard that. Yeah. that he I almost away. said thank God. But, I, <laughs> but he, you know, I people say, where do you get these actors and these crazy people? Eventually found out, but they were real people that yeah. really found their way. Underdog lady. Yeah. They all, oh, yeah. Absolutely, absolutely serious. Like, crackhead Bob really was a crackhead that really had a stroke, you know, and all that stuff. The only one... The only one that was a scam, that was a total sham, was the Tourette's girl that came on, and she had us all fooled for I think oh, a yeah, year, I wow. a year, and then we found out she had totally scammed us. You know, you know, uh, Beetlejuice used to come into a strip club that I worked in in Jersey. <laughs> he used that, to just come in randomly. That guy, there was never a time that he walked into the studio where I didn't go, whoa. You know, you never got used to what he looked like. Like, when he walked in for the hundredth time, it's like, whoa. You know, like, whoa. And he had attitude. What a, oh, man, you, you couldn't make these characters up. You really couldn't make them up, you know. Gary the Retard was really retard. Do you remember Dan the Farter? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the guy came, it was the classic thing. The yeah. guy was going to poop the Star Spangled Banner on the Ed Sullivan show. Only it happened in real life. You know, he came on they, and Gary put down a plastic shit. <laughs> As a sheet, and the guy strained, and he shit, and he shit, and, and people to, to this day, I can't, I can't believe it happened, and we're like beside ourselves, fucking Howard, let him come back in and try again, and he puts out a place, and he shit again, and it was, and oh. years later, I was working at Poker 
a turn, and I got a phone call. And this guy said, Jackie, this is your friend Dan. I said, Dan? He said, yeah, I want to get some comps for tonight. Who, who are you? I don't know you. He said, this is Dan the farter. I said, Dan, you're not really my friend. You, you shit in front of me twice. <laughs> you shit for me. Oh, that makes me gag. You're more like but Dan the shit. But he did the second time. They put down the plastic and he's trained. And it's like the class. Can a guy clear his throat? You know? Let me ask you this. Did, 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 did Dan charge for public appearances? Uh, you know what? I don't for know. For shitting? What, but, you know, uh, even telling that story. Yeah. And the whole world heard that. And the whole world saw it. I don't know if that's on the e-show. So I don't. I don't think you can show that anymore. Than you can show a vagina, yeah. and uh, but that really happened. And when I'm sitting here telling the story, I'm like, Jack, are you making that up? Because there's no way a guy is sta- imagine a guy standing here pulling down his pants and crapping. I mean, I can't, I can't imagine what it, what it smelled like. Uh, we were screaming. I would love. I, they must play that on Best of, right? They must have, yeah. Oh my god! Oh, oh that was that was one of. The, that was a defining. Oh, moment. the KKK guy! I always laughed at him. Oh, Daniel oh, yeah. Carver. Daniel, yeah. oh. Daniel, say hello to Robin. That's not a person. That's, He's a, that's, that's an a beast. Animal. That's yeah. a beast. She's not a person. That's an animal. My, my favorite line he ever said, and I quoted it a few times. Is a, 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 any any white woman to have sex with nigger needs to have her vagina packed with cement. Uh, I got to use that in my life. Jeez, I use I that. I think Daniel had the line. I, was, I think it was on uh, Bud Bungo Fiesta. And they they were playing that game with him, and they, and I think Robin said, "Do I look like an animal?" And he was like, "Yes." And oh. I, he didn't even miss a beat. It was oh just my like, gosh. Well, "Wow!" And you know, he did so many shows with us, like you know, like uh, you know, whatever Buck Bongo Fiesta, so things like that, and came on the show so often that you get to know these people. Yeah. And he was, we'll it was like was Bears hanging out with OJ. We'll you know, he was like, a nice guy. No, I'm not saying he's a nice guy, but he, he's normal. It's my clan friend. Talking about anything else, you know what I mean? Like. It's just strange, just like you know, like OJ. What he had one bad day, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. I heard uh, I heard Artie Artie Lang say, uh, <laughs> Daniel Carver once said, Howard. One day the 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 uh, what did what's the joke? Oh my god! Uh, oh, way to go, Bobby! Go, I fucked it up. Don't there take it now. Moment. I had everybody's god attention. Damn it. Bobby finally <laughs> seizes the moment. Oh, way to shit. go, ah, Bobby! Fucking, fucking, Bobby shit the bed. I shit the bed. <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> how did you uh, How did you get the job on Stern? I um, I was the first guy that made his own records, and I worked in a studio in the seventies, and I learned how to make records. And then I made a record, then I made another record, then I made another record, and I sent them to everybody in the world. And then I was working at a place in Washington D.C. called Garvin's, and the owner said, "Hey, there's a disc jockey here that just got fired for, you know, you remember the thing you said about the bridge, like the the." The plane hit the bridge, and then he called the airline and said, is that going to be a regular stop or one of these things? And he didn't even really do it, but he got fired. That's funny. But, but they said he's going to NBC. You should look him up. So I sent my three comedy albums blind to Howard Stern, Care, NBC. I never heard of him. I never listened to the radio. And uh, a couple months later, he just called up. My, my girlfriend at the time, my future wife, called up and said, hey, that disc jockey Howard Stern's on the phone. You know, he wants you to call him. So I called up, and he came right on the phone and said, hey, we listen to your records, and we think you're funny. Why don't you come in and hang out? Rockefeller Center, are you kidding? So I drove in and sat with Howard and Fred and Robin. And at the end of the show, he said, you're a lot of fun. Why don't you come back next week? So I came back once a week for free for three years. Then we went to mornings in 86, and we went to Pluto. Along the way, I'd been slipping him notes and giving him ideas. And he said, hey, I want you to come in in the morning and do your thing with the notes. And I passed him notes, and we were funny, and we kicked ass and went, Syndicated, boom, 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 boom. The next thing I knew, I was rich. And was that he, that was the point where you, where you knew you were making it? Like at that point, like getting hitting that stardom level, or you know what? It, there's no, there's no defining thing because like you know, I was a comic that made forty dollars, and then I was a comic that made a hundred dollars, and I was a comic that made five hundred dollars. You know, it's always weird when I'd hear my my wife or my girlfriend. She'd say, "No, no, Jackie's getting eight hundred dollars now." I'm like, "Don't." Get Nobody's yeah. gonna pay that. You know, Jackie's getting two grand. I don't think he's me. You know, yeah. <laughs> but um, one of the defining moments um, for me was we got syndicated to. Um, we started getting syndicated everywhere, but they started the Channel Nine show, so people always knew what Howard looked like. You know, in the beginning, people didn't even know Robin was black. You know, things were very slow. But then once we had the E show, was it was a whole thing, and people knew who all of us were, and 
we got syndicated and we're on in New Orleans, I guess. And uh, I went to New Orleans for a charity gig with my wife. And we were on Bourbon Street, and we went upstairs to have dinner at one of those outdoor things, looking down on Bourbon Street, and the guy's playing the tubas and everything. And we're sitting there at a, at a wrought iron table, and it's so cool. And the waiter came over and so nonchalantly said, Hi, Jackie. Hi, Nancy. He not only knew me, but he referred to my wife like somebody he knew because he was that familiar with the show that he even knew my wife. You know, I was like... That in my mind, I was like, you know what? We're getting bigger. Yeah. You know, they not just know Howard. They don't just know me. They know Nancy. You know. Yeah. So I thought that was pretty cool. Well, her name were rattling off uh, whack packers. You know, like like we know them. Like we hear their stories. You know, it's just a, and I think that's what that just knowing people in their little nuances in their day to day is amazing. It was a that was one of my claims to fame. Is I, I coined that whack pack. What? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. There was a lot of them though. There's some good ones in there. No yeah, white pack. Yeah, there was a lot of them. Amazing. Amazing lineup. For me, I think uh, knowing, you know, Stern had, you know, made it in L.A. like for the first time because I was, I was interning at a few stations there and uh, I was fortunate enough to do KLSX when he was on there and uh, you heard that, he, you know, oh, it's cool, but it's it wasn't the same because he's not in the studio. So it's like, yeah, we have Howard Stern. It wasn't until uh, Private Parts came out and he was doing the book signing and you know my friends like well you you know we're gonna we're gonna camp out like for what you know and he's like it's it's stern I'm like well I know it's stern and then you see this line it was crazy it started forming and he was like the, my buddy was like fourth in line and it was like all the way and I think he signed until everybody was done it was like a, it was like a nine hour line it was crazy it was you know, insane it was such a, you know when when that movie got made it, my most fun show business story is. When the movie had the premiere in L.A., after the premiere, we were hanging out at the Sky Bar. It was me and Gary and Stuttering John. We're hanging out with John Stamos and Dean Cain and George Clooney. So the th- six of us are sitting there. I you know, stand there at that, the upstairs thing in the Sky Bar drinking and having a great time. And then Dean Cain and Clooney meander over and they're kind of at the top of the stairs. And the girls are coming up the stairs and they're like holding court, you know, like checking the girls out as they came up the stairs and we're drinking and we're having so much fun and Stamos looks over at the top of the stairs and there's Clooney and Dean Kane. Stamos turns to us and goes look those poor broads they can't make up their minds Superman or Batman Superman or Batman <laughs> How wild is only in Hollywood, man? Because at the time, that's who they were. It was yeah. like, holy shit, this yeah. is a big time, you know? Wow. It's great, great stuff. Fun. Great so, fun. Uh, Friday and Saturday are at the uh, South Point since Bobby Seven thirty at South Point. The amazing Bobby Slayton and me, Jackie Martling, and Stuttering John Melendez. It should be a great show. 7 30 Saturday and 7 30 Friday. Still tickets available. It, you know, it actually could be sold out by now because it's only 20 bucks. It's going to be a great, great night. Great, great night. When I uh, first met Bobby Slayton, I was concierge over at uh, the Monte Carlo. He used to come around because he had a show at Hooters. So he used to come around and meet all the concierge and invite you out to, to a free show. And So we, he, he'd come in regularly. To, and he's like, how come whenever I come in here, it's always you and Retardo? Because my buddy Mike was there. We're like, because you come on the same day. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> it, it, chances are we're, we're on the same schedule. And he used to come in and then... Uh, we went to a show and I we and uh, he goes, "You're you're really funny. You should do something with like, well, I have a radio show." And, and uh, he goes, "Oh, I'd love to come on." I'm like, "Well, you know, when you tell a funny joke, we'll let you on." <laughs> <laughs> he's a good yeah, man. he was good. Yeah, he's he's been he's been really a good friend, supporter of the show. And uh, every time we're out in L.A., we always swing by, and even if it's at his house, it's like you know, good guy. So yeah, he was like, "I'm not going to be out there till like Thursday. I can't do your show." And I was like, "Oh, it'd be great to have you and Jaggy on." Then he called on Tuesday and was like. I'll be there. And I was like, sweet. So, hey, he's a good cat. Yeah, he's good. I like that. I had a brief encounter with him when I started in at the cellar. I think I was doing it for like six months. I went out there, and I really shouldn't have been there. And it was clear when I got up there, I really shouldn't have been there. <laughs> but I thought I had it. And you know, when you start, I think, oh, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. And, I, and you know, I really shouldn't have been at the cellar at that point. But he was there. He, I saw him briefly. He was he was sort of nice. Is he always that high strung, by the way? Yes. He shot out of a cannon. Yeah. I forgot all about that when he was sitting here. I was like, Ugh. Yeah, he goes. He probably doesn't even remember. It's like, yeah, but when I was starting to... That's why when he stops talking, there's a moment of... Because you're like, oh, he's done. It's like, okay, yeah. <laughs> no, that's good, you know? Yeah. So, uh, can you give us some Dirty Johnny jokes? Dirty Johnny jokes? Yeah. Or... Uh, my favorite is uh, Dirty Johnny walks past his parents' bedroom and sees his mother 
uh, giving her, his father a blowjob. He says, Jesus Christ, I can't believe you sent me to the fucking psychiatrist for sucking on my thumb. Whew. <laughs> 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 The greatest, the greatest short joke is the couple goes to the marriage counselor, and the marriage counselor says, I think we should begin with something you have in common. And the husband says, neither of us likes to suck cock. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, like that, uh, I like that one joke. I think it's a dirty Johnny joke where he runs upstairs and sees his mom uh, masturbating in the room, and she's like, oh, Lord, I need a man. Oh, Lord, I need a man. And so... He comes home the next day from school, runs upstairs, and there's this guy on top of his mom just going to town. So he runs into his room, takes his clothes off, starts jerking off. He's like, oh, Lord, I need a bike. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, so, yeah, there's I need a over. bike here, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Paying attention, Lord. That's ah, great. It's good stuff. How many jokes do you think uh, you tell? Like in, in an average set, how many do you think you fire off? Um. <clears throat> You know, it's funny because a guy asked me this on a podcast. Tony Perkins, uh, a black gentleman. A black. Then he said, gentleman. A, a black. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. A black newscaster in Washington, D.C. Really funny guy. I've known, he's from Philadelphia. I've known him for like, you know, 35 years or whatever. I don't hold and him and Gary, uh, uh, Gary Stein have a podcast. And they said, how many jokes do you know? And I said, about 200. Because I thought they had said, how many jokes are in a set? So they're thinking, oh, wow, I thought it was a lot more than that. Well, no, no, it's about 200. <laughs> so I, I could have sworn Jackie knew more than 200 jokes. <laughs> but it's like, you know, 150, 200. You know, at one point, I, can't, I don't even remember, you know. It's not, it's not, some people say, what is it, 800? But it isn't. You know, it's like a. It a, seems like a lot. A finite number. Because you you're just, they're just so rapid fire. You know. Do you have them categorized at all, or, or, or documented? You know how on um, Joan Rivers had the the file of all the jokes. Do you have them you know, written? You know, it or? was the way I did it was so much fun. It was so organic because I was in a band, that three piece band I was in, and we tell nobody ever told us that comedians do the same act and change audiences. <laughs> so we're in the same bar every week. So we tried to change our act, you know, so we're going through every book, everything. I already knew all the jokes, but we're finding jokes, 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 and we'd have monitors and be sitting there playing guitar, and I had all these pieces of paper with this joke, that joke, and this joke, and that joke. But I saved all the hunks of paper, and then one day I moved into this house, you know, this gatehouse of this huge estate, and the living room, was there was no furniture. It was just a big, wide-open, you know, wooden floor with just a fireplace. So I made a fire and then sat there in the middle and put... It was like I was the center of a flower. Dirty Johnny joke here, quickie joke here, little old lady joke there, Polish joke there, Jewish joke there. And I created the categories, and I had a whole category, and they were all my computer, and I was like so anal about it. And I had all of them, you know, so it was crazy. And it, you know, and then when I go through, people are like, how do you do your, your act? And it's like, how, well, when you're driving to the city, how do you know enough to go past each of the exits? They're just along the way. You know, I just do, I do the same, you know, if you see me act, my act two nights in a row, you can see almost the same thing, but you can veer off if you want, you know, mm-hmm. you can stop to take a leak or go over here to get a burger, you know, you go do a couple of jokes here, yeah. or, you know, but it's, you know, it's the only thing I know, so, you know, it's, it's people, oh, how do you remember that? Well, I was a doctor, remember, every goddamn <laughs> organ, and, you know, <laughs> yeah. that, as Jackie Mason would, Jackie Mason would say, I says, field, that's his field, that's what he does, it's the man's field. That's how come he knows? <laughs> <laughs> I remember uh, when you were uh, doing the Riviera when Carl first started putting out your albums and you'd finish up and go down and play with the band. That was always fun. That was just, you know, I actually, my friend Eric Middleman actually took video. I have video of me playing Mustang Sally with uh, Lon Bronson and the band and it was the greatest band because all the guys from all over Las Vegas would come there would be two trombones yeah. and three saxophones and four guitars it would be just amazing and I'd be you know after the show I'd be so loaded and then to get up and play was just a joy you know just, he, Lon Bronson's just the greatest guy you know one night I was up there playing Mustang Sally and Drew Carey was playing the trumpet yeah. you know it was <laughs> some wild nights you know so so <laughs> Two guys are on the dock fishing, and one guy is fishing and fishing, getting nothing. The other guy reaches into his bait box, takes out a piece of bait, puts it on a hook, throws it in, pulls in a fish. Takes out a piece of bait, puts it on a hook, 
throws in the line, pulls out a fish. Fifth at the fish, at the fish. Finally, the other guy says, wait one minute. We're sitting here in the dock. I'm fishing. Nothing. You're sitting there. You reach in the bait box, take out a piece of bait, put it on your hook, throw it in, and pull in a fish, fish after fish. What are you using for bait? He says, well, I'm a little embarrassed to tell you, but uh, I-, I got a buddy who works at the morgue, and he sells me pussies to use for bait, <laughs> and and the fish can't resist, and, you know, they they just go for it. The other guy says, yeah, but every time you take out a piece of bait, you sniff it. You sniff it before you put it on the hook. Why do you sniff it? The other guy says, ah, he's a low-life asshole. Sometimes he throws in a few assholes. <laughs> <laughs> Give it up for uh, Jackie the Joke Man, everybody. Uh, at Jackie Martlin, J-A-C-K-I-E-M-A-R-T-L-I-N-G. Please follow me on Twitter. You get a dirty joke every day at 4.20 p.m. International Marijuana Time. There you go. And uh, it's Rock and Comedy Radio coming up at 7 o'clock. It is the Atomic Cast, so uh, listen for that right here. Olio Records. you got to give Carl. Oh, of course. Carl oh, Olio of Olio right Records. All my CDs are on Olio Records on Amazon and iTunes. He's practically helped decorate the uh, new studio. He's a good man. All of his wonderful posters. The Joke Man, Sergeant Pecker, Hot Dogs and Donuts, Come Again, F. Jackie, and Snart. Most of your posters are right <laughs> over there. You got most of them. There they are. <laughs> Jay, thank you. This is so much fun. I don't want to be a walking, talking plug machine. But no, what that's, that's what it's nice about. Nice to meet you, Bruce, you here? Bobby. Likewise. Nice Linda Lou, I can't wait to have sex with we'll you. See you uh, we'll see you Friday. <laughs> oh. And uh, we're going uh, to sign off, and uh, we'll see you guys tomorrow. I'm smoking pot. Uh-huh. And I'm thinking about you. Show them what we wrote on page two, Frankie. Yes, yes. I got my dick out. <laughs> and I'm thinking about you.